Hi, Susie Rhodes with Past Masters here for another Questions of the Week. This week, our topic is Portfolio Performance Measures 2. You can expect to find questions related to this topic on your SIE exam, Series 65, and Series 66. So there are a few math questions ones that you can answer with a basic non-programmable calculator, because of course they won't let you take them any, any phone or any fancy financial calculator into the test. We're gonna take a 10 question topic quiz. It's in our Past Masters Online Securities course. Let's check out our learning management system. A bond with a par value of $1,000 is selling in the secondary market for 90 points. If the bond pays $45 in annual interest, what is the bond's current yield? So let me ask, is this bond selling at par, a premium, or a discount? Less than 100 is a discount, so $900 is the current market price. The formula for current yield on a bond is annual interest divided by current market price. So like I said, basic non-programmable calculator, and it seems like you know you can handle the math on your own, please don't, because I can't, I need a calculator. 45 divided by 900, it looks like 0.05, so 5%. So you click what you think is the right answer, you click check answer, You know you got it right if you get that green check mark. You can also click show explanation and read the answer, or you can listen. So it's me, all of our questions have audio explanations. Now there's one other point to this kind of a question that I want to emphasize for you, and that is use your brain. Because sometimes the calculator lies or you input the wrong information. If a bond is trading for less than par, you know current yield, yield to maturity, and yield to call must all be higher than the bond's coupon rate. So if a bond is paying $45 in annual interest, its coupon or nominal yield is 4.5%. Was our answer higher than 4.5%? Yes. So always use your brain as a double check. Use some logic. What is the after-tax yield of a 7% municipal bond issued in the state of Florida, but owned by an Arizona client that is in a tax bracket of 6% and federal tax bracket of 30%? So what is the tax rule for municipal bonds? They tax themselves, but not each other. So the municipal bond is taxed at the state level. Unless it's a double exempt bond, which would be in this question, an Arizona client bought an Arizona bond, but that is not the case here. Municipal bonds interest is tax free federally. So we're gonna ignore the federal tax bracket, but we are gonna pay attention to the state tax bracket. The complement of the state tax bracket, 100% minus 6% is 94%. That is how much of the yield that this investor will get to keep. So we're going to punch into our calculator 0.07, that is the municipal bonds yield times the complement of the tax bracket 0.94 to get the after tax yield. So it looks like 0.0658, the correct answer 6.58%. So the test is famous for having information in the question that you don't even need. You just ignored the federal income tax bracket. Municipal bonds are tax free federally. Your customer is in a 30% tax bracket. Which investment will be best for them? Corporate bond, stock, mutual fund, or municipal bond? Municipal bonds are best for investors in high tax brackets. 30% is a high tax bracket. So that is the best recommendation with the given information in that question. When calculating current yield, which statement is true? The investor's cost is used. Paper profits are considered. Unrealized profits are a factor. 
or dividends or interest is included. The only one of those statements that is true is dividends or interest is included. So the formula for current yield on a stock, annual dividends divided by current market price on a bond, it's annual interest divided by current market price formula for current yield. When comparing returns of different investments that have different holding periods, it is best to annualize the returns for comparison purposes. Mm -hmm, I like that. Let's check the others. Pick the highest quarterly return, find their respective beta factors, determine the investment with the least risk. If you're comparing the test loves, the best rate of return for comparison purposes is an annualized return. You can't look at a quarterly return and a 10-year holding period return and compare them. You need to get them annualized. A 9% bond that matures in 10 years is purchased for $940. What is true about this bond's yield to maturity? So the teeter-totter. Nominal yield is a tattoo on your chest. <laughs> Let's put the current market price over here. And then we have current yield, yield to maturity, and yield to call. So right, <laughs> you stretch your arms out. So if the market price is less than 940 is less than par, you know current yield, yield to maturity, yield to call. That's the order of the yields. They never get around and move or they can't, they can't change. Nominal yield. Coupon rate never changes, tattoo on your chest. So let's see. It must be more than the nominal yield. Yes. It is less than the current yield. False. The teeter-totter never lies. It is the same as the nominal yield. No, only if the bond was trading at par. It is less than the coupon rate. False. The yield to maturity because the bond is purchased at a discount must be more than the nominal yield. What is the formula for the investor's yield? So instead of current yield, it's asking for investor's yield. So we're gonna take annual income. And in the denominator of that fraction, we're going to have the investor's cost. So annual income divided by the investor's cost. So let's see our choices. Yield divided by what was paid, mm, I like that. Yield divided by current market price. No, that's current yield. Growth divided by what was paid. Yield plus growth divided by what was paid. No. Yield. Annual income. So if it's a, a stock, it's dividends. If it's a bond, it's interest divided by what was paid. Investors yield or plain old yield. Total return would include which of the following? Appreciation. Yes. Appreciation, dividends, and interest. Yes. Other choices, dividends, and interest. So yield plus growth. Yield is the dividends or interest plus appreciation or minus depreciation as the case may be. So this is the most correct choice. When comparing after-tax returns of debt versus equity, which statement is true? The bonds will have a higher after-tax return. The interest paid by the debt is taxed at a higher rate than the dividend income. The interest paid by the debt is taxed at long-term capital gains rates. The equity will have a lower after-tax return. So which one of these is true? The interest paid by the debt is taxed at a higher rate. It's taxed as ordinary income. Dividend income, if it's a qualified dividend, is taxed at long-term capital gains rates. If it's a non-qualified dividend, that is taxed under current tax code as ordinary income. But the best answer to this question is the interest paid by the debt is taxed at a higher rate than the dividend income. A stock that was purchased for $100 paid $3 in dividends and had $9 in appreciation over the past year. 
Inflation was 3.5% over the last year. What is the stock's real return? So when you see real return, that is inflation adjusted return. I suggest you start off with a calculation for total return. So total return is yield plus growth. So three plus nine is 12 divided by 100. I know you can eyeball this one, but just double check with your calculator, 12%. But that's not the answer. That would be the answer if it had asked you for total return. We're gonna subtract from that 0 0.035 for inflation. The real return inflation adjusted is 8.5%. Your friend, the calculator. There's not a lot of math questions on these exams. The math questions generally are going to be like the ones we have practiced. Great job with another week's questions of the week. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask me, just put them in the comments below. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel if you're not already, and turn those post notifications on. If you'd like to check out past master's course offerings or to enroll in any of our programs, there's a link found in this video's description. Keep up the good work. I hope to have you as a student soon. Happy studies. You got this.